Some of you people may think I'm just picking on his older material as it's easier to cover and poke fun at. Really, it doesn't matter what era they come from. They all boil down to the same core concepts and jokes. To validate this argument, here's one of his newer episodes. Ready. Set. Zoom! <laughs> What's so damn funny, Sam? Zoom Brothers. Zoom Brothers. I'll bet they date the Speedy Sisters. Besides a couple new characters and slight redesigns, they do not stand out as their own. This is unfortunately true with series made by other proud members of the Logo Blooper fandom as well. And speaking of, let's segue into one of the other more popular members, Max Andrew. When you visit his channel, you are greeted with a buttload of trademarks. Hammer this fact into my head, Professor Max. Did you know that Logo Intro Bloopers is a trademark? Yes, it's true. What, like it wasn't? It's not a word to describe any logo blooper show. You're right. It's three. The first time Max Andrew has used this term for his show was in January 5th, 2014, as you can see here. Um, could you, like, put a bunch of arrows around the circles? I don't think I understood what you meant. The name of the show doesn't contain any third-party trademarks such as Looney Tunes, Screen Gems, PBS, or CBS, therefore, the term can be protected by its creator. That's true, but why on earth would you think the simple title of Logo Intro Bloopers should be protected? Wouldn't that be considered a somewhat fraudulent use of a trademark? But bracket, it's not fraud- Shush, hear me out. I'll go over that once I finish responding to this. Although the word isn't officially registered by any trademark register from different countries, it doesn't have to be, as the U.S. court case by Akami International Inc. vs. IJR Capital Investments LLC said that the Krusty Krab name, which has been used in SpongeBob SquarePants, even though it wasn't registered by Viacom, as U.S. District Judge Gray Miller ruled that ownership of a trademark is established by use, not by registration, meaning that the creator can protect its word mark without registering it. Okay, thanks for the information. There's this one problem which could have made your defense no and void though. You are someone from the United Kingdom setting a United States court case, implying trademarks work the same way worldwide. Well, non-registered ones anyway. People like you are the reason why Article 13 has managed to succeed. I have to solemnly give you a brutal fuck you. Funny. So for all the people that use the logo intro bloopers trademark for your videos, please rename your show into something generic. Like logo intro bloopers is also not a generic title. Mm. Like your username's logo bloopers or name based on one logo. I take serious trouble with your first suggestion. Most fans of logo bloopers have these overly complicated string of random things as their username. Making it an acronym will not save them from this fault. Using the logo intro bloopers word mark will creates confusion to viewers and harm Max Andrew's future views on his channel. Except it fucking doesn't. If you were to look up those channels, your videos normally appear at the top of the related feed. And from the looks of things, those posers are all doing pretty shit in views, all things considered. Beyond that, you're not getting a profit off of the works you produce. You have zero motive to even worry about this sort of thing unless they themselves were monetizing. But considering how many subs they have, it's pretty much impossible. Max proceeds to end the disclaimer by reprising his core talking points. I certainly couldn't remember the things you said for 90 seconds. Oh, and have a gander at the comments. They know even less about trademarks and copyright than Max does. Some of which are so misunderstood, Max himself needed to tell them so. Let us not forget CPOB, LIRL, Sky Shorts, NOB. And FOB are all my trademarks, so don't steal it, okay, folks? My show, Vichy and Friends, my puppet show, is a trademark, well, sorta, of. and character elimination is a registered trademark, well, not really, kinda. What? Kin and Kin Pocket are trademarks protected by Vector Interactive. Any unauthorized uses of the names would result in a cease and desist order. Let's not forget. The Blue Helmet Digital Network Inc. and the Raisin Brand Flash Entertainment LLC, which are two of my registered and patented trademarks. If you don't consider that to be enough, now here's a few from his direct message to the fakers. Dang pirates, how dare they use your trademark without permission. I hate pirates. Use watermarks. I could do that. But I already had the watermark on the bottom right of the videos. Wait, you mean the golden icon seen on next to everything you produced? You know what I'm gonna do, Max?
Oh look, your work's not copyrighted anymore! Checkmate, scumbag! Yeah, he seems to have a hard-on for trademarks, much like Bulk Disney did. Every second of his intro has to shoehorn some kind of trademark. This includes the warning screen and the icons in them. Wouldn't these all be deemed useless if you are using tons of trademarked logos and such? Oh, and Max, you're British, so fair use does not apply to you. But enough depressing crap, let's watch the Sam Yeos commercial, yeah! From the people who think kids will buy anything with a character tie-in. At least he's indirectly insulting his young user base. Congrats, Max. Comes Sam Yeos. TM. The cereal with Microsoft Sam on it. TM. Just open the box and pour it in the bowl. I do not advise you add glue to the cereal. It comes with Microsoft Sam cereals and Microsoft Sam marshmallows. Oh, and Sam looks an awful lot like... Sam? Want some flavor? Good for you, because Sammy O's has flavor cereal like strawberry, orange- Orange cereal? Orange is one of those flavors which is written to not be put into cereal. And blackcurrant. They freaking ban that here. Want it in one? Then get Sammy O's flavor mix that has strawberry, orange, and blackcurrant all in one. If you want to suffer the trifecta of disgusting combinations, go on and buy that. Only $20 at your local Quickie Mart. Poor Poo though, now he has no job. Thanks, liberals. Sammy O's, the cereal you will love. TM. Also available in new flavors like raspberry, blueberry, and chocolate. Those flavors work for pretty much anything except grains. The Ugly Gradient for Flavor Mix Volume 2 also looks unappetizing. I believe Scott the Woz said it best. I don't think mixed berry is the best flavor to combine with marshmallows, but what do I know? I don't cereal for a living. Flavor cereal likes orange. Huh? Microsoft Sam Marshmallows. What? Though with chocolate, I guess it's perfectly fine. To be real, the biggest problems with any text-to-speech medium has little to do with the original content creators themselves. Most of the time. It more so has to do with the clones, the fanboys, and the other degrees of spurginess which inhabit the fandom. These are what truly contaminate the pure vision of their series. Error requests are constantly being submitted by obsessive types who cry if their errors don't make the cut. Logo bloopers have their comment sections maxed out with stupid requests as well, and total gibberish. And worst of all, both have these robotic kinds of accounts who randomly say that these were from the past. I've placed plenty of these eyesores in my recent TTS in a nutshell parody. This type of behavior is actually very expected. You will discover that most of the worst are made by the novel's long username having groups. Mostly the PoE group, surprisingly. Yeah, I haven't talked about them much at all. Though my reason for not doing so is that I find them to be at least partially tolerable. The fans are as spoiled as century-old milk, but the group as a whole is bearable in a goofy way. I can't even imagine the pressure these creators have to go through when squeakers come in and trash the party. Those Milton fans are also found to be logo thieves and request wars too. This technically applies to any sort of logo-related video, but logo bloopers are their breeding ground. But viewers... If you want a concise reason why I haven't been doing videos on user group people lately, it's something I've come to realize ever since, well, roughly last year. My ramblings and misgivings will ultimately remain useless. They have shown they will rarely ever shift away from the mind-numbing things they create, and for those who do leave, about 10 more are added in their place. And if you think deeply enough about how much of a cult there is, it boils down to a weakness many of us can suffer from. Blind nostalgia. It's the kind of thing which has people still thinking Teen Titans 2003 or Kid Rock are legendary. When you look back and take off the nostalgia goggles, you begin to understand how your underdeveloped mindset lied to you all this time. Okay, I won't judge you if you do like either, but still. One other possibility is the laid back and cozy vibes. A lot of us have some kind of entertainment which just comforts us, disregarding the sameness. For myself, Texas Beach was one of them as a young teenager before the transition period that was 2015. Matter of fact, my old channel contained another thing which had the same effect, local forecasts. Shoot, I still make my own and watch them every once in a while when I'm bored. I make those more for myself than a general audience, different from how local blooper fans make their own niche. I mean zero disrespect towards lovers of computer voices. I was one years ago, so I can relate. Your stuff might be sleep-inducing, but in most scenarios it isn't fundamentally wrong. And with that, I should just wrap this topic off here. This is Brack and Neutron signing off. Apologies for how long the gap's been since the last proper video. Artwork and overall lack of interest is to blame. I promise though that the old days retrospective will be done before the year ends. Anyways, thanks for watching.
Tell her, 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 tell her